Welcome in, welcome all to another edition of TGPW, the Grill Position Wrestling, the most unprofessional professional wrestling in Fire Pro Wrestling. I, of course, am your host, the Swink Nick Swinky. We are coming at you with a very special ROH Ring of Honor tribute show entitled Honor Never Dies. We've got 10 big matches coming your way. This is the first of those 10 it is a roh tradition a four corner survival match as it's delirious versus matt seidel versus danhausen versus dalton castle as you can see our referee also for this evening is senior roh referee todd sinclair before we go any further make sure to like the video leave a comment if you would subscribe to the channel if you have not yet Share the video. Set up notifications so you're notified when the next video from TGPW is uploaded to the channel. And if you missed any of the previous shows, you can catch up with a handy dandy playlist that I will drop the iCard for on in the video here. So you can catch up on all the previous TGPW action. There's a double drop kick by Delirious and Side L. Delirious and Matt Seidel know each other very well. Came up in the wrestling business together. Traveled up and down the roads. Going from show to show. They've been partners. They've been opponents. So they know each other very well. Dalton Castle. A former Ring of Honor world, ch <coughs> world champion. Excuse me. And a former ROH world television champion as well. Danhausen only recently joining the ROH roster, but a fan favorite nonetheless. People love that Danhausen, and you see Danhausen and Castle with a double suplex. There's a bow and arrow stretch by Seidel. Standing switch reversal by Delirious as he shoots Seidel off into the ropes. Takedown by Castle. Standing switch by Danhausen sends Castle into the quarter turnbuckle. Repeated shoulder thrusts there from Danhausen, and now go behind by Delirious into the back switch, showing off some uh, technical prowess. There is the Lizard Man, Delirious. There's a submission there, but it's quickly broken up. Again, this is a four-corner survival match, meaning this is one fall to a finish. This is not elimination. So the first pinfall submission or knockout wins this one. There's a quick two count. Half-hatch suplex by Dalton on Delirious. Double-team move by Seidel and Dalton Castle there. Seidel is sent all the way out to the floor. Seidel, a former ROH Tag Team Champion with the Fallen Angel Christopher Daniels, who we will see later on in our main event of tonight's show. Matt Seidel, also a member of the group known as Generation Next, including Austin Aries, Roderick Strong, Alex Shelley, and Jack Evans, who we will see as well on this show in a huge Atomico's eight-man tag team matchup. There's the lightning spiral by Seidel. But does not go for a cover. Instead throws Dan Housen to the floor. Follows him outside. We've got the fight on the floor. Inside the ring we've got Castle and Dan, or sorry, uh, Delirious. A lot of D's here. Dan Housen with the Cradle DDT on side L on the floor. And look at that, Seidel steals Danhausen's own move. Hits the cradle DDT on him on the floor. Now both men back into the ring. Yeah. 
There's a gut wrench suplex by Castle and an overhead belly to belly throw. A side on Danhausen trade shots. Danhausen getting the better of that exchange. It's caught in the head right there. Stagger with that roundhouse kick by Seidel. Series of chops from Seidel. Go behind by Danhausen. Hits the uh, the axe handle. Dalton Castle with a quick cover on Delirious. It gets a 2.9. There's a Northern Lights on the other side of the ring. But in the ropes, German with the bridge. And he got him. Dalton Castle, the party peacock, is your winner in this opening four-quarter survival. All right, we are moving on to match number two here at Honor Never Dies. It is a tag team contest. Introducing first, making their way to the ring, accompanied by Maria Canellis Bennett. It is the team of Matt Taven and Mike Bennett, the kingdom. And their opponents making their way to the ring is the team of the infamous Bobby Fish and the violent artist Kyle O'Reilly. Together, they are known as Red Dragon. Matt Taven, Bobby Fish starting this one off here. As there you see Maria in the corner of the kingdom. The kingdom, of course, was a stable in ROH consisting of Matt Taven, Mike Bennett, Adam Cole, Maria Canellis Bennett, Mike Bennett's wife, of course, and Matt Hardy before Matt Hardy would leave the company. Uh, eventually, Bennett and Maria would also leave, along with Adam Cole, as Adam Cole would move on to join the Bullet Club and then move on to the World Wrestling Entertainment promotion. Might have heard of them, WWE. <laughs> but uh, Taven would soldier on, continue on with the uh, kingdom name, adding Vinnie Marseille and TKO Ryan to the group. But the this is the original kingdom here, the OGK, if you will, team of Bennett and Taven. And there's Chasing the Dragon right there. But right away, Red Dragon went for their finish. I don't think you want to trade kicks with Bobby Fish, that's for sure. Taven heads up top, hits a frog splash, gets a one count before Kyle O'Reilly kicks out. There's a, a cross face hold by Fish. A kick to the ribs of Taven, but Taven slaps on a side headlock here. Trying to slow down the momentum of Red Dragon here, but there's a headbutt off the top by Fish. Nice counter by Taven, and he wisely makes a tag to Mike Bennett. Taven and Bennett, former Ring of Honor World Tag Team Champions and former IWGP Tag Team Champions in New Japan Pro Wrestling together. As I mentioned, Taven would go on to form his own version of the kingdom with Orion and Marseille 
and they would be Ring of Honor World Six Man Tag Team Champions. Fires chasing the dragon again. Is that it? One, two, oh, nearly three, 2.9. And now Maria on the apron. Taven was a little slow getting there. And now Maria standing on the apron, distracting Todd Sinclair. But Bennett had to kick out there. Both Taven and Maria were late getting there. Matt Taven, a former Ring of Honor world champion. There's a heel hook by Fish, but Bennett there to break it up. Hits a super kick on O'Reilly. Tilt to world backbreaker by Bobby Fish as he drop kicks the knee. He kicked his leg out of his leg. Bobby Fish and Kyle O'Reilly. Again, collectively known as Red Dragon, have been a tag team in multiple promotions, including Ring of Honor. Where they are former three-time Ring of Honor World Tag Team Champions. They too have also held gold in New Japan as a team as they are two-time. IWGP Junior Heavyweight Tag Team Champions. They also won the Super Junior Tag Tournament in 2014. Kyle O'Reilly, also a former Ring of Honor World Champion. Bobby Fish, a former Ring of Honor World Television Champion. Red Dragon also won Tag Wars Tournament 2014. Two and nearly three off that moonsault by Taven. Swinging neckbreaker on O'Reilly. Frog splash off the top from Taven, but the ropes break there to save O'Reilly. They, of course, also went to WWE where Red Dragon did, where they were two-time Ring of Honor, sorry, two-time NXT Tag Team Champions with Adam Cole and Roderick Strong. Of course, those titles were defended under the free bird rules, twisting Brain Buster on Taven, uh, or sorry, on Bennett, as Taven hits a power bomb on Fish, goes for the cover, gets two before O'Reilly is there to break it up. Of course, both of these teams associated with Adam Cole. O'Reilly and Cole go all the way back to their early days in ROH where O'Reilly and Cole were a tag team known as Future Shock. O'Reilly and Cole would then go on to become rivals before coming back together under the WWE NXT banner as Undisputed Era alongside Fish and Roderick Strong. You will see uh, Cole a little bit later on, and we also will see Roderick Strong a little bit later on in this show. Matt Taven hits the stroke, goes for a cover, and no. Fish is there to break it up, hits a dragon screw on Bennett. Cross arm breaker applied, but you can see Maria was distracting Todd Sinclair on the apron. Taven hits a super kick on O'Reilly. Two former Ring of Honor World Champions going at it here as O'Reilly hits a big boot.
Taven charges in with that lariat in the corner. As he sends Fish into the other corner on the opposite side of the ring. Repeated shoulder thrust to the midsection of Fish. Hits that <clears throat> rock bottom. Shoots him off the ropes. Catches him and hits that spine buster. Double A Arn Anderson style. Nice Northern Lights suplex. Cover gets two. And then Maria on the apron now. Providing another distraction as O'Reilly has the cross arm breaker on Bennett. Another dragon screw by Fish. And now he goes for the cross arm breaker. Taven there, though, to save his partner and the matchup for his team as he hits a super kick on KOR. Bobby sent to the buckle. Lariat by Bennett. Repeated punches in that side headlock. Here's a quick roll up. Two and three. No, 2.9 kick out as O'Reilly with that combination takes down Taven, who is dazed in the center of the ring. Another Northern Light by Fish as he goes for another cover and gets the three as the distraction from Maria does not work as O'Reilly hits a brain buster on Taven and Red Dragon win this match. On to match number three here at Honor Never Dies. It is a singles contest. Introducing first, making his way to the ring, representing the embassy. It is the crown jewel, Jimmy Rave. And his opponent making his way to the ring. It is Nigel McGinnis. Here we go, Jimmy Rave, Nigel McGinnis, one-on-one -on -one here. Quick cover by Nigel, not even a one-count. Going to take a little more than that to beat the crown jewel, the NBC Jimmy Rave. Nigel letting the fans know what he thinks of him. Of course, Nigel McGinnis, former Ring of Honor world champion, former Ring of Honor pure champion. There we see... The technical prowess of Nigel McGinnis on display right there. As I mentioned, former Ring of Honor world champion and peer champion is Nigel McGinnis. One of the longest reigning Ring of Honor world champions in ROH history. Need the midsection by Jimmy Rave. But Nigel McGinnis holding that title for over 545 days. He was champion. He defeated Takeshi Morishima to win that belt. Back on October the 6th, 2007. He would end up losing the title on April 3rd, 2009 at Supercard of Honor 4 to none other than Jerry Lynn. And in terms of combined days, as far as <clears throat> single reigns when it comes to the Ring of Honor World Championship, Najee McGinnis is second to only Samoa Joe 
At 645 days did Samoa Joe uh, hold that title. One time and record longest reigning champion Samoa Joe. Who we will see later on in this show as well. But Nigel holding the title the second longest out of anyone in a single reign at 545 days. Third behind him, Brian Danielson at 462 days. And we will see Brian Danielson in the main event of tonight's show as he will be taking on Loki and Christopher Daniels in a three-way dance. And an elbow drop from the top misses. There's a cover to a no. Jimmy Rave almost got him there. Loading him up. There's the pedigree. Does not go for the cover, though. Instead, hits a brain buster. Jimmy Rave taking it to the former world champion here. Sends him head first into the mat. There's a knee strike and a cover, but a rope break as Nigel knows where he's at at all times inside that ring. There's a variation of a, a camel clutch. And a European uppercut from Nigel. There's a stampede. Nigel sends him into the corner. Could be setting him up for maybe the London Dungeon, but no, not the Legend Dungeon, the uh, the Tower of London, my bad. London Dungeon is a submission hold. Jimmy Rave, though, from the top, hits a frog splash. But a DDT from Nigel McGinnis. But out of nowhere, there's the pedigree by Jimmy. Jimmy, oh no, runs into referee Todd Sinclair. Sinclair goes down. And now we got a battle here. Rolling Lariat by Nigel McGinnis. And now a series of European uppercuts. Repeated arm drag, sweeps out the leg, but out is Jimmy Rave. Another leg sweep by Jimmy, but there's the gonorrhea. The gonorrhea connects, but Nigel back on his feet, but he's dazed. Snapmare takeover by Nigel. Soccer ball kick to the back. Back into that submission hold. And the middle of the buckle could be setting him up for Tower of London. There it is, the Tower of London. That could be it. Two and three. No! Jimmy Rave out of 2.9 out of the Tower of London. Drop kick to the back from Rave. Rave showing his heart, his determination. Hits a frog splash to the back of Nigel. A former world champion in a bit of trouble here as Jimmy Rave has been taking the fight to him all throughout this one. This is the high knee, does Jimmy. There's the lariat by Nigel. And just takes him down with that chop. Jimmy hits the high knee. Scooping a slam by Rave. Rave, drop kick on Nigel. European uppercut from McGinnis. Jimmy sent off the rope, gets hit with a chote. McGinnis swats away the drop kick, back to the submission, center of the ring, nowhere to go, and that's it. Jimmy Rave has no choice but to tap out as Nigel McGinnis picks up the win here in this singles contest. It is now time for an Atomico's match, an eight-man tag team contest. 
Introducing first team number one on their way to the ring. It is the team of Austin Aries, Roderick Strong, Alex Shelley, and Jack Evans. Generation next. And their opponents on the way to the ring. It's the team of the Octopus, Jonathan Gresham, Jay Lethal, Rhett Titus, and Hot Sauce Tracy Williams. Together, they are the Foundation. Here we go, eight-man tag team action. Atomico's match, if you will. And we've got Generation Next versus The Foundation. Two factions from Ring of Honor's past and present colliding here. As we've got Austin Aries, A-double himself in there with the Octopus, Jonathan Gresham. There's a quick slam and a cover and just a one count as Gresham tags out to Haas House, Tracy Williams. Austin Aries, of course, former two-time Ring of Honor World Champion. Former tag team champion as well. Alongside Roderick Strong as members of Generation Next. And there is Roderick Strong, as Roderick Strong is tagged in. Double suplex by Roddy and Aries. As Roderick now into the stronghold. But Williams is able to escape as he tags out to Jay Lethal. Another former Ring of Honor World Champion is Jay Lethal. Two-time Ring of Honor World Champion is Lethal. Strong back in. Strong tags out to Jack Evans. Evan sent for a ride. Takes him over. Does lethal. Misses the Inziguri. Snapmare takeover by lethal. And we've seen lethal and Gresham in TGPW in the past as a tag team. They were eliminated in the first round of the TGPW tag title tournament. As Alex Shelley is tagged in. We also saw Alex Shelley and TGPW in the tag same tag tournament as he teamed up with his partner Chris Sabin as one half of the Motor City Machine Guns. Yeah. Scoop and a slam by Rhett Titus. Big chop to the chest from Titus. A chicken wing by Shelly. Nice reversal. And there's a chop. Oh, a forearm smash, but a swinging neckbreaker by Shelly. Series of elbows. And a tag is made to Roderick. So here comes in Lethal. Roderick Strong, also a former Ring of Honor World Champion. A Ring of Honor World Television Champion as well. And as I mentioned earlier, a tag champ with Ares. So you could say a triple crown winner in ROH is Roderick Strong. There's a drop kick by Lethal. Lethal, also a former Ring of Honor World Television and World Tag Team Champion as well. So he is also. In fact, he's also a Ring of Honor Pure Champion, so he's a Grand Slam Champion as Jay Lethal in Ring of Honor. One of the only men to hold all four Ring of Honor Championships. Now we got an all-out brawl on the floor here. 
as all the guys in this match are on the outside. Absolute mayhem here as Jack Evans with a standing shooter on Tracy Williams, but it's quickly broken up. Triple team beat down by Jen next on Rhett Titus. Absolute mayhem, and it seems like for a second their order was restored, but quickly into the ring. Look at this. Double team combination by Roderick Strong and Alex Shelley. Quick roll up. Interesting to note. Alex Shelley and Jonathan Gresham, also former stable mates in ROH. Leaping in Zaguri by Jay Lethal to Austin Aries as a Rhett Titus is tagged in. There's a roll up. One count only. Rhett Titus and Austin Aries also have a history together. There's a quick roll up and just one count. Plants a face first does Titus into the center of the ring and it's quickly broken up there. Gut wrench suplex by Titus, but a tag is made to Roderick Strong. Roddy with that leaping knee. Has him up. And there's a chop from Roderick Strong. You don't want to take a chop from Roderick Strong. Oh, there's the end of Heartache. But does not go for the cover. Yeah. Spinning back chop, but a leaping in Z by Roderick. Takes down Titus. And a chop to the throat. Roderick Strong has some of the most lethal chops in wrestling. Not a guy you want to trade chops with. Gresham misses the drop kick. Lethal. Sorry. Not lethal. Evans misses the spinning soul butt, but hits the Rana as he takes down Gresham. Yeah. Evans shoots him off, but gets caught with that knee from Gresham coming in. Sliding forearm to and no. He likes to call that the bayonet. Look at this double team combination right there. He's got him locked in a hole in the center of the ring, but it's quickly broken up as everybody's in there now. Super kick by Shelly takes down Lethal as Shelly heads up top. High cross body from the top. Did he get him? No. 2.9 kick out from Lethal. Roderick with the end of heartache on Rhett Titus. And there was an arm drag. And there's the shell shock. The shell shock connects. Is that it? Two and no. Lethal out of two. Double underhook suplex. There's a power bomb. Stacks him up. Does lethal. But Shelly able to grab the ropes and tags in Evans. Evans standing. Shooting star press with the cover. No. Running lariat by hot sauce. Tracy Williams. 
Tracy Williams, a former Ring of Honor Tag Team Champion, with that elbow, catches Jack Evans. Discus Lariat. He's also a former IWTV uh, Independent Wrestling Champion. Roderick Strong showing off why they call him Roderick Strong. Well, that suplex. Able to hoist Tracy Williams up. Roderick tags out to Alex Shelley. It's a drop kick on Gresham, but Gresham has him locked in cross face. Everybody's in there now. Gresham heads up, standing shoot or sorry, shooting star press from the top rather gets a two point nine. And both men go down, but Gresham back to his feet first. A chop staggers Shelley as a tag is made. The hot sauce. Combination of strikes there from Shelley. From Williams to Shelley as Shelley flips out the back door and tags in Roderick. Hits the double knee gut buster. Strong with that running knee in the corner. As him up again and hits the, the gut buster again. But now he's caught in the corner and takes a discus lariat. Brain buster by Hot Sauce. As Strong staggered, levels him with that lariat. But the sigh of the backbreaker with a pendulum backbreaker as he tags at Alex Shelley. Shelley counters, but a rope break as the members of the foundation in there now. Lethal was caught in the corner. And caught in a trough face is Alex Shelley, and he taps out. Austin Aries can't get there in time. The foundation pick up the win over Generation Next. Halfway point here at TGPW Honor Never Dies. It is match number five, and it is another tag team contest. Introducing first, making their way to the ring, <laughs> the team of Kevin Steen and El Generico. Steenerico. I like that. El Steen. <laughs> their opponents making their way to the ring. It is Demboas from Sandy Fork, Delaware. It is Mark and Jay, the Briscoes. The Briscoe Brothers. Not to be confused with the other Briscoes, Jack and Jerry. But here we are with this tag team contest. Steen Erico against the Briscoes with Kevin Steen starting this one off. Against Mark Briscoe. There's a swinging neckbreaker on Mark. Eleven time tag team champions are the Briscoe brothers in Ring of Honor. In addition to holding tag team titles... And other promotions, including New Japan Pro Wrestling, Pro Wrestling Noah, PWG, and recently GCW, 2K1 Neck Bomb, right there as a tag is made to El Generico. The generic luchador in there hits a back suplex. On mark, drop toe hold. 
And another one. Jay Briscoe in there, former Ring of Honor World Champion is Jay Briscoe. Stacks him up on the power bomb. And a tag is made to Mark. Mark, a former television champion. Keep your eye on El Generico through the ropes with that tornado DDT. Spike powerbomb by Sinerico on the floor. These two teams fought each other before over the Ring of Honor World Tag Team titles. Generico gets back in, avoiding the count out. Little redneck kung fu right there by Mark Briscoe. He gets caught again with that 2K1 neck breaker. Kevin Steen, former Ring of Honor World Champion, in the camel clutch. Dean sends him all the way to the outside. Steeds grabs a chair and goes outside the ring. As Jay Briscoe and El Generico make it back in. There's the Heyman Snackbreaker by Jay. Of course, El Generico and Kevin Steen, former tag team champions in their own right, defeated the Age of the Fall to win those belts back on September 19, 2008 in Boston. was their first and only reign as tag team champions. They would end up losing the titles to the Wolves, Davy Richards and Eddie Edwards, the American Wolves, that is, on an episode of Ring of Honor Wrestling, April 10, 2009, in a Tables Are Legal match. A 2K1 neck breaker again and a two count. Ford's barking up. Cor uh, correction, Briscoes have won the tag titles 12 times in ROH, not 11. 12 time tag team champions, their last reign, of course, coming. Uh, or beginning, you, I should say, on December 11 of 2021 at Final Battle, where they defeated the OGK, Matt Taven, and Mike Bennett, who we saw earlier in the show. They got him! Jay Briscoe could not get there in time to break up the fall. El Generico and Kevin Steen win as Steen hits a senton on Mark Briscoe for good measure. Match number six, Honor Never Dies, is another tag team matchup. Introducing first from Rancho Cucamonga, California. 
Matt Jackson. Nick Jackson. The Young Boxer. And their opponents making their way to the ring from Chicago, Illinois. It is classic Cole Cabana and the Second City Savior CM Punk. The Straight Edge Savior CM Punk. Together they are the Second City Saints. Here we go, CM Punk and Matt Jackson starting this one off. Back, body drop by Matt Jackson. Matt Jackson, CM Punk going at it here. As a tag is made to Colt Cabana. Cabana and Punk, former Ring of Honor World Tag Team Champions together as the Second City Saints. Of course, the Young Bucks, multiple time Ring of Honor World Tag Team Champions. There's a super kick party. Three-time tag team champions, so might I add, were the Young Bucks One. in ROH. Two-time tag team champions were Punk and Cabana. They defeated the Briscoes who we saw earlier in Chicago for those titles. At Reborn Stage 2, way back on April 24th of 2004. Then at Round Rod Robin Challenge 3, they would put the titles on the line in a match where they'd lose to BJ Whitmer and Dan Maff of the Prophecy. Whitmer and Maff would then lose the titles in the second match of the Round Robin Challenge to the Briscoe Brothers and the Briscoes. In the third part of the challenge, would lose the tag team titles back to Punk and Cabana. Punk and Cabana would then go on to lose the titles to the Rottweilers, Ricky Reyes, and Rocky Romero, also known as the Havana Pitbulls. As I mentioned, the Young Bucks have three separate reigns. As tag Team Champions are first coming back on March 8th, 2014. Also in Chicago, where they defeated Red Dragon to win those belts. They would win the belts back on September 30th of 2016. When they lost... When, when they defeated Christopher Daniels and Frankie Kazarian of the Addiction to win those belts in a three-way ladder war that also involved the Motor City Machine Guns. They would lose the titles. There is the BT trigger into a sharpshooter in the center of the ring, but CM Punk is there to break it up. I mentioned the Bucks would lose the titles to the Hardy Boys, Matt and Jeff. The Bucks would regain the titles for the third and final time in a ladder match where they defeated the Hardys at Super Card of Honor 11 on April 1st, 2017. Series of Northern Light suplexes gets a two count before Colt Cabana breaks it up. But in addition to being three-time Ring of Honor World Tag Team Champions, the Young Bucks 
also record setting seven time IWGP Junior Heavyweight Tag Team Champions, also won the Heavyweight Tag Titles. Six time, or uh, three times never open weight six man tag team champions. Super Junior Tag Tournament winners. Also held the Campeonato de Pereas in Chakara. Four time PWG World Tag Team Champions. They held the ROH World Six Man titles twice with Hangman Adam Page and with Cody Rhodes, that is. And of course, uh, former AEW World Tag Team Champions as well. So the Young Bucks, one of the most highly decorated tag teams in, well, the last 20 years of wrestling. And certainly one of the best tag teams of all time. Of course, CM Punk, much more well known as a single star these days, but is a former Ring of Honor world champion. In addition to being a two time tag champ with Colt Cabana. Of course, he's held the WWE Championship on two separate occasions. There's a Bulldog, including that WWE Championship reign that lasted 434 days. There's a Face Buster setting him up for a springboard Hurricane Rana. Nick Jackson showing off his athleticism right there. A kick to the head from uh, from Punk as he tags in Cabana. Yeah. <laughs> the flying asshole in the corner from Cabana. Setting him up for another one, but no, this time a tag is made to Nick's brother Matt. Matt with the repeating Northern Light suplexes. But Cabana in the ropes as Punk hits the welcome to Chicago motherfucker on Nick Jackson. That double underhook backbreaker. And again, welcome to Chicago motherfucker. There's the clutch pin. To, well, no, not even the two count before Nick Jackson's there to break it up. Super kick by Matt on Cabana. Gets a 2.9. Punk also a former three-time, I want to say, WWE World Heavyweight Champion. Punk handle driver two and no. Oh. The welcome to Chicago again. And a counter this time by Matt Jackson as he tags in Nick. A little super kick parte and a roll up two and three. He could not get there in time to break it up as Matt Jackson celebrates as the Young Bucks get the win over the Second City Saints. Match number seven is a singles contest. Introducing first, making his way to the ring. Adam Cole, baby. And his opponent, the notorious 187, Homicide. Here we go, Adam Cole, baby, against the Notorious 187 Homicide. Two former Ring of Honor World Champions. 
going at it here. Adam Cole, I believe, the only man to hold the Ring of Honor World Championship three times. There's a pump kick by Adam Cole, baby. And a neckbreaker now by Cole. On homicide, a side sends him into the buckle. But another neckbreaker from Cole. Chop to the chest from Homicide. Northern Light Suplex with a bridge. But Homicide getting the rope break there. Ed lock tape over. Cole gets the rope break now. Trading shots here. Who's going to get the better of this exchange? Homicide looks like he won that one. Of course, Adam Cole representing the elite in this match as Homicide represents Violence Unlimited. There's a super kick from Cole. With the cover goes Cole. And a two count as Homicide gets the shoulder up. Nice counter by Adam Cole into the Bulldog. Northern Lights with the bridge. Center of the ring right on the logo. Gets a two count as Homicide kicks out. Homicide catches him coming in with the kitchen sink. But a mule kick to the nether regions of uh, Homicide. Homicide double underhook suplex takes him over. There's the cutter. By Homicide, the Ace Crusher, if you will, hooks the leg and gets a two count. Body slammed by Adam Cole. Cole loads him up and hits the neckbreaker on the knee. Gets a two count there. Homicide fighting back. Bam, Cole has him up. Ushi Roshi. Again, focusing on that knee. Here we go. Cop killer. The gringo killer, the cop killer, whatever you want to call it. Two and no. Oh. Adam Cole out at two. That move, though. One homicide, a Ring of Honor World Championship. He defeated Brian Danielson to win the title. Breaker by Cole. There's the Ace Crusher again from Homicide. Two and no. Super kick. Right on the jaw. Is that enough? Two and no. 2.9 kick out from Homicide as he hits another Ace Crusher. Rolls him over, goes for a cover, hooks the leg, gets a two count as well. Back and forth we go. Both guys trading signature maneuvers, but only getting a two count. Expending a lot of energy here. In this first time ever matchup between these two guys. Uh-oh, Adam Cole adds up top, hits a frog splash from the top. Is that enough? No, 2.9 kick out from Homicide. Has him up again, another Gringo killer. Throws him over, hooks the leg. Is that it? No. Rolling Lariat by Homicide. But Cole with a Canadian Destroyer. Hooks a leg, two and three. No, Homicide out of 2.9. There's referee Todd Sinclair. Cole drags him back towards the center. Just a shot to the back of the head. And another shot. But goes low, does Homicide. Back and forth they go here as Homicide has him up. Pile driver connects. Is that it? Two and three. He got him. 
the pile driver gets the win for homicide over Adam Cole, baby. And we are moving on to match eight here. It is a another singles matchup. This one with TGPW implications. As you see, the American Wolf, Davey Richards, making his way out to the ring. And his opponent making his way to the ring, representing violence. Unlimited. Big bad Brody King. Brody King, Davy Richards. As I mentioned, this match having TGPW implications. Both of these men have competed in TGPW in the past. In fact, Davy Richards, with a winning record in TGPW, is only blemish coming to a loss to battle JR. But another win here would go a long way towards putting Davy Richards in title contention. Brody King, the last time we saw him was in a tag match where he teamed with his tag team partner, uh, Alistair Black, in the Kings of the Black Throne, where they lost to the tag team of Hardcore Thunder, Hardcore Hipster, Neil Carroll's, and the Thunder Horse. Before that, Brody King has a singles victory over Samoa Joe in a TGPW ring. So this is Brody's second singles match in TGBW only. As I mentioned, Davey Richards, three wins, two losses. So a 3-2 record. One of those losses coming in a six-way spot for a shot elimination match. And again, the other match, the other single, the only singles loss was to battle JR. Richard defeated. Uh, Eddie Edwards, his tag team partner in the Wolves. American Wolves back in July at uh, Blood Red, White, and Blue. Wait a minute. What's going on here? We've got some outside interference. That's Santana Jackson. What the hell is he doing out here? The king of pop Santana Jackson is out here. And it looks like he's helping Davy Richards for some reason. Uh, this is an unlikely duo. Santana Jackson taking down Brody King. And now we got a two on one here. This is not who I expected to come out here to help Davy Richards. But Brody King doing his best to fight off this two-on-one assault. As Santana Jackson now heading to the back. As Brody King has Richards up. But Brody King reversed. Out of the corner with that power bomb by Davey. Obviously Davey giving up a lot of size. To the massive Brody King who just leveled him with that lariat. But Davey Richards, a former Ring of Honor World Champion. Falcon Arrow did the deal. Nobody kicks out of the Falcon Arrow. Another Lariat just decapitates him. And that could be it. Two and three. No, Davey Richards out of 2.9. DR Driver connects. Is that it? 
two and three. No. Uh, as I was going to say, Richard's other win at Hasta La Vista Baby in July over Brian Cage. That's his other singles win. He also won a... Uh, oh, there's a 2.9. He also won a three-way elimination match over Mecca Wolf 450. And Jacob fought two. There's a cover again, and he got him. Brody King defeats a former world champion at Davey Richards. And it is now time for our semi-main event of the evening. And it is a singles contest set for... One fall, introducing first, making his way to the ring, the Samoan submission machine, Samoa Joe, and his opponent, representing the Bullet Club, it is Kent. Ta well, as I mentioned in our last match, Brody King, who is now two and zero in singles matches in TGPW, his singles victory, his previous singles victory before the one he just. Uh, scored over Davy Richards in our last match was against this man Samoa Joe so Samoa Joe making only his second appearance here in TGPW but has a distinction of being the longest reigning Ring of Honor world champion ever a feat that I don't think will ever be surpassed Samoa Joe was champion for 645 days. That, to put that in perspective, that's 100 days more than the second place man on the list, Nigel McGinnis, at 545. So 645 days for Samoa Joe as Ring of Honor world champion. And he was only the third Ring of Honor champion in the history of the title. As he won the title way back on March 22, 2003 at Night of Champions, defeating the late Xavier. Uh, Joe would end up losing the title on December 26th of 2004 at Final Battle 2004 to Austin Aries. But that historic title reign has never been duplicated. And the only person to hold the title of more combined days is actually Jay Lethal, but he's held the title twice. His two title reigns equally combined 707 days. Which, when you do the math, is only 62 days more than Samoa Joe held it in his one title reign. Uh, that goes to show you just how great of a champion Samoa Joe was. He would go on to have success in both uh, TNA and a modicum of success in the WWE. A three time NXT champion. I believe it's three time NXT champion. Was it only twice? Of 
Tornado DET out of the corner from Kent uh, drops the knee. Oh, no, I'm right. Three-time NXT champion. Yeah, because he and uh, Nakamura, I believe, traded the belt back and forth. There's the running Busaiku knee kick from Kenta as he hits a fisherman buster. Speaking of busters, there's a muscle buster from Joe. Drags Kenta back out, goes for the cover. Both hands pressed and a 2.9. Wait a minute, what the hell is this? That's, that's El Phantasmo. I mentioned coming into this match, Kenta representing Bullet Club, and well, there's El Phantasmo. It's the Styles Clash on Samoa Joe. And a low blow. And look at Kenta. Kenta. <sighs> Definitely full of himself now that he has ELP out here helping him. There's a leaping in Zaguri by Joe, but a German suplex on the big man from Kenta. Joe now having to try to fight off both members of Bullet Club here. Hits a leaping in Z as there goes ELP. He hightails it back up the rampway. But has the damage already been done? And the outside interference, Busaiku Nini, nobody home though. Wait, Kent just got him up. Go to sleep! And Joe is out. He indeed went to sleep as Kenta knocks the former Ring of Honor world champion out. Ladies and gentlemen, it is now time for our main event of the evening. Closing out Honor Never Dies is this three-way dance. It is a recreation, if you will, a callback to the very first main event of a Ring of Honor show at Era of Honor Begins way back in 2002. The main event of that show was Brian Danielson, the American Dragon Brian Danielson, taking on the Fallen Angel Christopher Daniels and the World Warrior Loki. And here it is again. Almost, well actually, yeah, 20 years later almost to the day. As the first Ring of Honor show was February 23rd, 2002. It's been 20 years since that match. And 20 years later, here we are revisiting that match. As it's low-key, American Dragon, Brian Danielson, and Christopher Daniels. And right off the bat, we got some hot action here. Back and forth it goes. And maybe 20 years later, but these guys can still go. The American Dragon showing off those kicks. Speaking of kicks, there's Loki. And a double team there by Daniels and Loki, but don't get it twisted. Those guys do not like each other. Even though they are former stable mates in NWA TNA, part of Triple X. That was a long time ago, and there's a combination cutter by Daniels and Danielson. All three of these men in the history of Ring of Honor would become Ring of Honor World Champion. Loki was the inaugural Ring of Honor World Champion as he would win the title in the tournament back in 2002 and stopping a mud hole in him and it looks like it's busted Loki wide open. You're gonna get your fucking head kicked in indeed as Loki is now gushing blood. But a kick to the forehead of Danielson and a back suplex for Daniels. There's a jawbreaker by the Fallen Angel. He hooks the leg, goes for a cover, but a rope break there. And because this is a three-way match, there are no disqualifications, no countouts. You can win by pinfall, submission, or knockout. You saw a knockout in our previous match. You can see another one here because Loki has knockout power with those kicks. 
Caught him unawares with that pitting combination. Did Daniels into the Koji clutch. He's got him in the Koji clutch. Is he going to give up? No. Loki's right there as Loki and Daniels showing off some of their former teamwork with that combination cutter. A little homage to the old Triple X days. And, uh, exploder suplex there by Daniels. American Dragon now in control. As I mentioned, Loki was the inaugural Ring of Honor World Champion. Daniels would then win the title next. Uh, in terms of these three, and would hold the title for the third longest reign in the history of the title. Behind only Nigel McGinnis and Samoa Joe, who we saw earlier in this show. And of these three, the man that finally won the title years later would be Christopher Daniels. It did not look like Daniels would ever win the Ring of Honor World Championship, but he finally did. In 2017, at the 15th anniversary show, where he defeated Adam Cole to end Adam Cole's third and final reign as champion. Daniel said, in case you were wondering, 462 days as champion, like I said. Third longest reign behind Nigel at 545 and Samoa Joe, as I mentioned, at 645. Third longest single reign. It puts him in the top five in combined reigns. As Jay Lethal is at the top, but again, he had two reigns as Ring of Honor World Champion. As Joe, Nigel, and Danielson only held the title once. But still had a top five long reign combined. And Danielson may be hurt. He's had a history of neck problems. You can see him rolling around, favoring his neck. His low key's blood is all over the ring canvas. Cross arm breaker by Daniels. There to break it up. Into the Koji clutch again. And that's it. Danielson could not get there in time to break it up as Christopher Daniels. Picks up the win here in this three-way dance to close out the show. Well, the Koji Clutch ends up clinching the win for the Fallen Angel Christopher Daniels here in this three-way dance. And closes out this tribute show to Ring of Honor. And that, folks, does it for another edition of TGPW, the Grill Position Wrestling. Most unprofessional professional wrestling and fire pro wrestling. Till next time, I am your host, The Swink, signing off. <laughs>